Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Now, a week or so ago, I was asked on the podcast if I would give you a kind of show and tell tour of my band's live rig and how we use Pro Tools live on stage. Totally happy to do that. So hence we are here in a live gigging environment. No, hang on. Um, the reason we're not doing this live on a gig is mainly for one of time and speed and energy. Quite frankly, at the moment, we are flat out with all the gigs up to Christmas. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to do this video kind of in situ. So we're going to fake it a little bit. Instead of using our live console and our PA, I'm going to use my main Pro Tools HD rig. So that's effectively the mixer we're running into. You'll get the idea. But the rest of the gear I'm using, the MacBook Pro and my rather brilliant Audion ID22 interface. These are the actual units that I use live. So let's go over to the MacBook Pro Pro Tool system so I can talk you through exactly what we do and how we do it live. So this is the actual rig that I use live. Uh, my MacBook Pro normally sits off to my left, away from the drums, um, within easy reach, and then that feeds via USB into the Audion ID22. Now the ID22 is really cool for two reasons. One, it's made of steel, it's good and solid, and it's roadworthy. Second thing that makes it really handy is it gives me four outputs. Four, why not just mono track, mono click? No, 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 we want things a bit more complicated than that. I like our live show to be stereo, God damn it! So, we have a stereo pair for the main kind of click track, or the main track type things. So, backing vocals, percussion effects, kind of whooshes and things like that, extra parts, brass, keyboards, stuff that we can't get to. There's only five of us in the band normally. Um, if we have brass, I can mute out the brass tracks, things like that. So the other two tracks, we have mono click, obviously, and that goes to myself, my in-ears, and our keyboard players in-ear monitors. Uh, and we have a mono track for bass. Now, sometimes our lead vocalist, who is normally our bass player, runs around and does the whole radio mic thing, and God, he's even entertaining, some would say. Um, so we need to have the track level on an independent fader. So if we're mixing, depending on the room we're in, we can actually control the bass level separately. Obviously, within the session I can do that, but from track to track, whoever's doing front of house mixing can actually control the bass separately, which is really, really handy. So, stereo pair for the kind of, the extra stuff, backing vocals, keyboards, extra guitars, brass parts, mono track for bass, and a mono track for the click. And that's all controlled from within Pro Tools. So let's have a look at the session. So this is the main session that we always use. Um, memory locators are the lifesaver here, but I'll get onto that one in a second. Uh, and you can see how I've divided everything up. We have our click on analog four, bass and analog three. Everything else feeds to the main analog output stereo pair. So we have an intro, which is our kind of backing track intro. Let me play that for you. So that's the intro. Above that is the click track, and you can see that click track runs pretty much consistently through all the tracks. Everything else is divided up into different sections. Uh, BV1, obviously backing vocals. Lead line is normally kind of synthy type stuff. Uh, keys is the main kind of keyboards part. So sometimes if we go as a three piece, I can just unmute the extra keyboards and put those in as well. So we can go as a three piece and have the same sort of sound. It's never quite the same, but it's pretty close. Strings, brass, guitar one, two, and three. Guitar three tends to double up as kind of other instruments that I can't be asked to rename and have tracks for. Brass, effects, um, percussion, and claps all kind of fall roughly into the same kind of category. Weird noises, uh, percussion, shakers, things like that. Now you'll see in some places, some of the tracks are actually muted. And that's because we've created the tracks or we've got the tracks in from somewhere else and we've decided those parts, I don't like them, we just want to get rid of them, we've muted them out. Now, depending on how we're editing and how we're sort of rehearsing and stuff and how we're putting these tracks together, we might want to bring them back in, we might change stuff. So all the way through, you might see gaps where there's nothing going on on those particular parts or you might see just bits of the track that are muted out, like this backing vocal section, for example, or down here on the bass part.
because he's probably playing bass by this point, but we want the extra oomph at the beginning. So it's a pretty straightforward session, but as I've said, um, memory locations are my saviour here. So as you can see, I can jump really quickly. <laughs> I can then jump, if for some reason we decide to cut a track or we jump around, I can jump around really easily and go. Everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. And the cool thing is, if I get to a point where I'm really stuck in a corner or something's not working, all I have to do is either solo the click track, so only I'm hearing it, we're still in time. Or if we want to change the order of the set, move things around, jump around for example, I can click jump around. Really, really handy. Now of course for sound check we want to make sure everything's going the right levels into the rig. Uh, into our main PA rig. So all I have to do is go, right, let's solo the bass, let's find a track where the bass is in. So I think there's some bass on, uh, don't you worry, child. Let's zoom out, let's find a place where the bass is. Somewhere else later on. Go back, just make sure the click's the right level for all of us all the way through. Solo that one out. Now, of course, the trick with this is to make this as stable as possible. Pro Tools, at best, we know is complicated. So you'll see here that I'm taking every possible um, action to make sure it's as stable as possible. Um, Hardware buffer size, we're not recording anything, all we're doing is playing back, so that's as big as it can possibly be. The session itself is stripped out to just the audio that I'm actually using. I think plugins wise, this is a pretty minimal system. As it turns out, I've got the UAD stuff on here as well, but you know, there's not a million instruments. There's a few things on there that you don't necessarily get out of the box, but you know, it's a pretty streamlined system. It's very, very stable touch wood it's never given me any grief um, there's been a couple of times where i've got the whole kind of pro tools has stopped working or whatever but actually in the middle of a track you can jump around and just get to where you need to get to and then all of a sudden if you need to get to a certain point and restart again jumping at a certain point of the track you can just about do it it's been done before so hopefully that gives you an sort of an insight into how i'm using pro tools live um control wise this is the big one uh i don't i haven't got any magic foot switches or anything like that because pretty much our set starts at the intro and it's one long song all the way up to the end of happy jump around is one long song all the way all the way to the end of dynamite um sing wake me up sexy know it sweet rock down They're all big, long medley tracks, um, sort of 15, 20 minutes minimum length. Some of them are 25 minutes now. So once the tracks are running, I haven't got to worry too much. I give the occasional click track. We know the occasional count, but we all know what we're doing pretty well. If I have to jump around and sort of like, oh, sort of panic a little bit, I can do. But I have given myself generally, let's say Dynamite is a live track. So for example, you can see I've got a good sort of two or three minutes to get to reach over and press stop, which normally was in some of the dance tracks, I'm only actually playing hi-hat and kick drum. So it's quite easy just to lean over. I've got the click track and I'm not going to go out of time. So hopefully you found that very useful. Um, try it. Um, the thing that most people say is, why don't you use Ableton Live live? And there's a really simple answer. I don't know it as well as I know Pro Tools. Pro Tools does exactly what I need it to do for the band sessions. You can see I can jump into pretty much any song I need to at any point. It's very, very, very handy. Oh, 
And that's the trick. We don't want to stop the party. Oh, it was so cheesy. So I've been James from Pro Tools Expert. I hope you enjoyed that and try using Pro Tools Live yourself. See you again soon for some more gear talk.